good morning everyone just wait i will share my screen good morning ma'am Yeah. Uh, yesterday, what you discussed exactly? What Dilwar sir told you? Can anyone please reply me? Ma'am, yesterday he taught uh, the twenty unit twenty two and twenty three. Twenty-two and twenty-three. Okay, fine. Uh, I cleared last class. I took uh, the background of Victorian age, right? Remember the rise of novel, how it uh, rose up. If you do not remember, then don't worry. I'll explain it again. Today we are going to discuss unit twenty-four and twenty-five. Okay, first we will discuss this. So next Saturday I will just everything. I will explain you everything. I don't know what happened to this. It's not opening. <coughs> yeah. Uh, let Let's discuss first unit twenty and twenty first. Okay, the blessed damsel. It was written by D. G. Rossetti. I hope you all can see my screen. The body, uh, the voice is clear. Audio and the video is also clear. Please answer me, ma'am. Your voice is breaking, ma'am. Breaking. Okay, give me a second. One second. Now your voice will be clear. I changed the location. Okay, and now we'll already fix that. Okay, uh, so in unit twenty, uh, we are going to discuss about the best, uh, the blessed damsel. It's a, it's a poem, uh, written by D. J. Rossetti. Okay, and after that, we are going to discuss about the background of twentieth century literature. Uh, who is Dante? Uh, please, please mute yourself, please. Who is Dante Gabriel Rossetti? 
I have to check again. Why I have to check every time? Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay, Gabriel Charles Dante Rossetti. He was born in 12th May, 1828. Remember, at least remember when the author or the poet is born and when he died. So uh, when you write your exam by mentioning a bit biography of author, so you will, you will get uh, more marks. At least the answer will look attractive and you will score good. Okay. So Gabriel Charles Dante Rossetti. He was born in 12th May, 1828 and died in 9th April, 1882. Remember that. Okay. He was generally known as Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Sometimes you will see that his name is D.G. Rossetti. Okay. He was an English poet, illustrator, a painter, and also a translator, and a member of Rossetti family. Uh, he was very royal. Uh, he belongs to a very royal family at that time in the uh, in the 19th, in the 20th century, in the last of 19th century, uh, he was, uh, he belongs to a very ro uh, royal family, okay. His work shows a passionate imagination. His works belongs to, uh, the, the way he writes his work, it shows that he is a very passionate, imaginative person. And he is very strongly contrasting Victorian art and the way he depicted his uh, art, it was very contrasting, okay, which was popular uh, during the second half of the 19th century. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, now we are going to discuss the blessed demoiselle. Uh, one second. Okay, uh, now uh, uh, open your book. First, introduction of the blessed demoiselle. Uh, this, this poem consists of 24 stanzas. Okay, remember that. And each stanza of the poem consists of six lines. That means it is written in sestet form. If a poem is consists of six lines, that means it is written in sestet. And if the stanza consists of eight lines, that means it is written in octave. If the stanza consists of four lines, that means quadrant. If the stanza consists of two lines, uh, what is this called? Quadrant means four lines. Yeah. Uh, two lines, there is no stanza. Okay, don't worry about that. The rhyme scheme which is used in this specific poem is ABC, BDB. Okay. Uh, themes that are presented in the poems are love. Christianity, virginity, and hope. Uh, basically, this uh, this uh, poem is all about a woman. She died. Uh, I'll explain this story. Don't worry. What happening? What is happening? I'll say it later. Okay. Uh, the themes that are presented in the poem are love, Christianity, virginity, hope. Remember that. See, every answer, whatever you are reading, if you are reading any poem, so you have to elaborate that first, who, who wrote that poem. Second, when he was born, when he was died, it is very important. Third, what that poet is. There are some poets who are dramatists. Okay. Some are satirist poets. Some are written in lament form. Lament form means... Elegy. Elegy is like uh, sorrowing poems. Okay. So you have to remember what that poet is about. Who, what he is exactly writing in the poem. Okay. Then themes that are present. Okay. I explained that. Uh, Andrea del Sarto, also called the faultless painter. Remember, I hope you all can see my screen. Uh, uh, Andrea del Sarto, also called the faultless painter, is a poem by Robert Browning. Even he was born in 1812 and died in 1889. Published in his 1855 poetry collection, Men and Women. It is very famous. You will see these kind of questions in your net exam. If you are writing a net exam. Okay. It is a dramatic monologue. Dramatic monologue. What is dramatic monologue? Anyone have any idea about it? 
बोलते साथ में it's all right a, a dramatic a monologue is a form of poetry for which he is famous about the italian painter andrea del sarto okay uh, now summary of the the blessed damsel open your book uh, page number 345 of your textbook 345 Okay. Uh, life and work of DJ Rossetti. Let's read it a bit, so we will get the information, right information about DJ Rossetti. Okay. Uh, named after his name after the Italian poet Dante Alighieri. Okay. Gabriel Charles Rossetti was the son of an Italian refugee living in London. he adapted the name dante in response to his father admiration for the great italian poet uh, soon rossetti made the story of dante and his beloved beat rise an integral part of his personal artistic mythology in in 40 in 1848 what happened rossetti founded the pre raphaelite brotherhood there was a movement called pre raphaelite movement so he joined those people and uh, that's why he was considered as pre raphaelite brotherhood okay <clears throat> along with artists like ford macdox brown john everest melies and william holman hunt the primary objective of the movement was written art to the purity of the style preceding raphael and the neo classical movement why this moment is called pre raphaelite moment because it was led by raphael okay and the neo classical pure poet what is neo classical exactly see classical period was that period when uh, people a uh, uh, classical period was a period of ancient time the writers were in classical period was homer uh, boccaccio petrarch okay you will uh, you will get to know these writer when you will start reading this see in your this this only small textbook you will not find the whole english literature it's about reading it's about you have to read everything then you will get to know first you have to you should have the idea about the classical writers then after that you should have the idea about why it is called the neo classical period neo classical period is also known as augustan period okay why it is called that because classical period was also al already there okay after that a uh, classical period came because in the classical period the writers of those time those period was very amazing they just want to show the purity of the humanism the way humans reflect their art okay they want to show that uh, humans are not only dedicated to obscene art obscene art means uh, a, a art form which is not good for mental health okay just like when uh, when a kid uh, when we see a teenager kid or a small kid we usually uh, tell them that don't watch porn don't do these stuff this is not good for your mental health so obscene art obscene literature was there theek hai before neo classical period there was a pre there was a period called after romanticism there was one period okay then started puritan period this period why this is happening because at that time there uh, there were people who were like shifted from uh of uh, shifted from uh, humanism to uh, obscene obscene stuffs okay so uh, now uh, the writers of neo classical period want to shift their focus to the good things that's why this period is called neo classical period or augustan period remember that okay and in the same after in the same time there was a period called pre raphaelite it was come under the neo classical period okay uh through a poet rossetti is better known as a painter some of course uh, believes that his great work was a writer rather than an artist so some people believe that he is a better writer then he was a better artist see that time uh, uh, right now when we think when we think about an artist artist is not only the person who used to paint stuff okay who who do painting and all artist is everyone who is doing something different creative stuff okay uh so in 1850 he fell in love with elizabeth and siddell remember that uh then also famous as of olivia 
in Milai's painting. Okay, he wrote, he made a painting. Uh, that painting name is Milai's. In that, he uh, that to draw that her uh, lover Elizabeth. Okay, uh, his model, aspiring poet and artist. They were married in 1860, so he got married to his beloved. After a period of invalidism and a stillborn child, he died of an overdose of laudanum, probably deliberate, in the late 1816. What happened? Rossetti has a long affair with Jane Morris. When his uh, beloved died, he had he had been in affair with the Jane Morris, his friend William's wife, who was a model for many of his poems. Robert Buchanan attacked him and Swinburne as proponent of the fleshy pub, the fleshy school of poetry. So when uh, uh, Robert uh, Robert Buchanan was another of his friend who was a member of fleshy school of poetry with him, so he just uh, what uh, attacked him, attacked whom? D. G. Rossetti. Okay, remember that. Rossetti views has a great influence on the later Victorian, especially Wilde and Pater. He founded a journal called the Germ in 1850. After it ceased, Rossetti uh, pictorial work became the focal point of the imaginative life. He wrote through the 1850s and 60s, but the period is dominated by his paintings, okay, and graphic writings. So he was like writing also, and he was painting also. But he was very famous for the paintings rather than as a writer. Uh, the early Italian poets in 1861, he also planned to publish another book. Who he? D. G. Rossetti. He uh, he planned to uh, publish his another book of translations. This publication didn't happen as Elizabeth, his wife, died. His grief and guilt at her death made him bury his original poems in a in a manuscript book in her grave. So what he did, instead of uh, going for publication uh, with those uh, collection of poems, he buried the, that manuscript with in his wife's graveyard. Okay, in the eighteen uh, in the late eighteen sixties, Rossetti turned back to his writing again. Then he started writing. Uh, Rossetti wrote on pictorial subjects like a. Superscription or overtly for his own picture like Sue's beauty, body's beauty, and Venus very uh, verticortia. Most of his poems of the second period are sonnets. Okay, publications are hindered because he has no longer had copies of his most important early poems. They laid buried in his wife's graveyard. His friends encouraged him to inhume the grave. So, in October 1869, the manuscript volume of his poetry was recovered.
Hello. Uh, yeah, the the Pallavi D. She shared the story. She Pallavi D. Are you there? Who just texted in the chat box? Pallavi D. Are you there? Okay, no one is there. You don't usually reply. Okay, the blessed damsel is a ballad. Okay, it's a form of ballad. It's, see, in, even the poems is written in different form. Ballad is a form. Okay, that is dedicated to the love between a woman trapped in the heaven and a man stuck on earth. What happened? What exactly the story is? The woman she died and she was in heaven. The man who is still alive is in earth, and the woman who is in the heaven she used to look down from a golden grail. She used to look down and see see peoples and the man she loves, and she was waiting for that man to die and come to the heaven so they can be together. So this was just this was the only gist of the poem. I will explain what was inside it each each and every line. Okay. The blessed devil. Uh, ma'am, my name is Pavani, ma'am. Pavani. Yeah, Pavani. Ah, uh, uh, not Pallavi. Okay, Pavani. Do you have the idea about this poem, DG Rosadi, the blessed demosel? Uh, I have no idea. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Then you can. Mute Thank now. you, ma'am. Okay, okay. Uh, the blessed demosel is a ballad that is dedicated to the love between a woman trapped in heaven, as I told you, and the man stuck in earth. Okay. The blessed demosel begins with the speaker describing a woman trapped in heaven and a man stuck on earth. Okay, so this was like a speaker is describing about the blessed demosel and also describing, describing sorry, describing about a man stuck on earth. It begins with a speaker. The poems started with a speaker describing a woman who leaning out from a heaven. So that was she standing on a grail and she was leaning out. That means she was looking down. Okay. Can be seen holding lilies in her hand, and what uh, she was holding lilies flower in on her in her hands. She was breathtakingly beautiful. The that woman, the blessed damsel, she is like gorgeous, but also melancholy. Okay. Uh, let me explain why this my laptop is so slow. It soon became clear that she left someone on earth. the way she was looking down she was looking on the earth it uh, it make them clear that uh, the, uh, she left someone on earth okay uh, there is a lover whose lines are written in the first poem For, pay, come to your textbook okay the blessed demosel leaned out page number 349 okay the blessed demosel leaned out that means he is leaning out from the gold bar of heaven the bars of heaven her eyes were deeper than the depth are uh, deeper than the depth means it's kind of a, a figure of speech in that it's showing that her eyes is looking for something deeper than than the depth of water still that even so she has tears in her in her eyes she has three lilies in her hand remember she has only three lily flowers in her hand and the stars in her her hair were seven so in the in her hair she was uh she put um, i mean she was carrying seven stars her robe and ring from claps to hem no rot flowers did adorn but a white rose of mary gift for service meetly drawn i'll explain you don't worry it soon became clear that she left someone on earth okay there is a lover whose lines are written in the first person okay i i explained you the the form of uh, the, there are three forms of writing a poem first person narrative second person narrative and the third person narrative first person narrative means the poet or the poem or the dramatist is writing from his point of view second person narrative means he is not writing uh, he has a narration or narrator also third person uh, right third person narration means there is a omni omnipotent narrator also who is looking everything from the upper upper side okay last sunday i explained this Uh, there is a lover whose lines are written in the first person and contained within parenthesis which is heart broken by her departure there is a huge difference between the two because the lady was in rampart of god's house on which she is leaning and the man was on earth 
the damsel surrounding like a bird song speaks out loud for all to hear she described the love that the two share and how how soon because they have to pray uh, praying to jesus christ mother that uh, uh, my beloved should come to oh my internet is unstable hello my voice is clear because from my side is showing that it's my internet is not stable Okay. Uh, Soon we can hear that. Okay, the damsel is sounding like a bird song. The way she spoke, it sounds like she is. Why you all are raising your hands? What happened? What is the problem? What do you want to ask? Ask me. I'm here. ask me it sounds uh, the damsel sounding like a bird song speaks out loud for all to hear she describe the love that the two share and how soon because uh, they have both virus and threat what is happening what uh, because they have both pray for it uh, they will be united god will bring them together okay once his beloved arrived in heaven she will show him all they will meet virgin mary and she will introduce them to christ who will bless their love so here the uh, the blessed damsel the damsel she is saying then once once his beloved once his beloved will die on earth and come to heaven then they will meet virgin mary who christ mother and she will introduce then she will take us to the christ that is virgin mary is going to take demosel and her beloved to the christ who is going to bless their love okay the two will ma'am demosel means what demosel means ma'am demosel means demosel is a name of that uh, that uh, woman who is in the heaven and she is like desperately want her beloved that means the male male one who is on the earth she want her beloved to come to the heaven so that they can be together again this is the only the story okay, they are thank you ma'am thank you they just dragged it okay nothing else the two will be able to finally live in the peace and solitude they did not to experience on earth unfortunately this is just a dream and after returning to reality the damsel break down crying once more at their separation okay uh, uh excuse me please tell me uh, yesterday what uh, the delwar explained you which units you just told me na 22 or 23 right yes ma'am okay fine uh, how many units we we covered i mean in the fourth block if i am not wrong 
we missed something right how many units we we have to cover any idea last time uh, when in which unit i stopped i think hard times in memoriam and the entry adults are to these three are missing fine i'll try, try to finish it soon don't worry okay unfortunately this is just a dream okay she was just dreaming all this and after written uh, returning to reality the damsel break down crying this was all about uh, the poem uh, the, uh, the poems uh, the blessed damsel written by dg rossetti okay now come to uh, 20th century let give me a time one minute hard times if i have the video of that now it's 2023 he explained wait are yaar again i need that uh can anyone please read something till the time i will uh, get my ppts come to page number okay uh, re read the question answer anyone from uh, you all my page number okay read the poem one second read page page number 348 okay and give me, uh, read something read page number 348 introduction introduction of the blessed demosel i will be back soon Ma'am, can I can I read, ma'am? Ah, uh, please read, please read. Tell Rosie T wrote the blessed. Yeah, yeah. Ma'am, no, I I can st start. Ah, uh, yeah, you can start now. Rosie T wrote the blessed damsel, one of his most famous poems, when he was only eighteen. The theme of Rosie T's poem has been taken from Dante's Vita Nuova. Nuova. Many people say his young vision of idealized. Love was very picturesque under the heavens. Rosetti so often painted, and those which were in his poems were akin to that of Dante's. The heaven that Rosetti painted in the Blessed Damozel was warm with physical bodies and beautiful angels full of love. Others consider Rosetti's description so immature. They argue that he had not yet seen the ugliness and despair that love can bring. which he experienced later in his life after the death of his true love elizabeth siddal the poem however is an excellent piece ma'am can i continue ma'am all those still young the images and themes in his poem attracted many critics throughout the years the poem is a beautiful story of how two lovers are separated by the death of the damosel and how she wishes to enter paradise but only if she can do so in the company of her beloved poem the blessed damsel the blessed damsel lend out from the gold bar of heaven her eyes were deeper than the depth her water still let even she had three lilies she had three lilies in her hand and the stars in her head were seven how the damsel is in heaven over looking at thinking of her lover whom she had left on earth she is described as an immortal maiden who leans down from heaven her eyes seem to be deeper than the waters she held lilies and had heaven stars in her head 3 and 7 are mystic numbers ma'am can i continue ma'am yeah please continue her robe ungrit from clasp to hem no wrought flowers did adorn but a white rose of mary's gift for her service sorry for service meetly worn her head that lay along her back was yellow like rip corn these lines describe the damsel's dress her robe is un unguit that is it does not have a girdle like the dress of nuns clasp here refers to the neck so form so from the neck the dress was loose mary virgin mary who servant the damsel is now her stranger her same as she scares had been a day one of god's foresters the wonder was not yet quite gone from the still look of hers albeit to them she left her day had counted as 10 years 
Rosetti here writes how far the damsel time seemed to last forever because she was without her love. Each day appeared to be undu unduly long. Her seemed, meaning it seemed to her, albeit although to one it is ten years of years at now, and in this place surely she leaned do do our me. Her hair fell all about my face. Nothing. The autumn falls off leaves. The whole year sets apace. This stanza takes us to the lover on earth. To him, it seems as if there are three sixty-five years since he lost three sixty days. He feels her hair fell on his face as she leaned over him. Fifth stanza. It was the rampart of God's house that she was standing on. By God built over the sheer depth. The which is space begun so high that looking down downward tense. She scarce could see the sun. The poem moves back on fourth form, heaven to earth. The damsel is now described as looking down on earth, rampart. Heaven is conceived as a castle of medieval times. This castle is so high that even the sun was not visible. Sixth stanza. It lies in heaven across the flood of. Either of other as a bridge beneath the tides of day and night, with flame and darkness ridge the void as low where the earth spins like a fretful midge. These lines continue to describe God's home. It lies across a flood, comprising either the description is vivid and creates a heavenly atmosphere. Around her, lovers newly met, mid deathless loves, acclaims, spoke every morning. Spoke every more among themselves. Their heart rem remembered names, and the souls mounting up to God went by her like thin flames. This is a reference to those lovers who were united after they reached heaven. The next few stanzas describe heaven, where other lovers are re reuniting, reuniting around the maiden as she sits and watches alone. Eighth stanza, and still she bowed herself and stooped. Out of the circling charm, until her bosom must have made the bar. She lay, she lean, do she lean head on warm, and the lilies lay as if asleep along her bent arm. She continues to lean and wait. She lean for so long that the railing seemed to have become warm by the hot heat of the heat of her body. The time reference here is made with a strange comparison. Even the lilies had gone off to sleep. Ninth stanza. From the fixed head place of heaven, she saw time like a pulse uh, shake fears through all the walls. Her gaze still stored within the gulf to pierce its path. And now she spoke as when the stars sang in their spheres. She stood, she stood transfixed to one place from where she visualizes time like a pulse shaking through the universe. The stars sang. The singing of the stars is a reference to the to the creation of the wall. The spheres are circular objects of objects and paths. Ma'am, can I continue, ma'am? Yeah, please continue because it's not open. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Tenth stanza, ma'am. Yes. Ah, uh, tenth stanza. The sun was gone now. The curled moon was like a little feather fluttering. Far down the gulf, and now she spoke through the still weather. Her voice was like the voice the stars had when they sang together. In stanzas ten and eleven, her earthborn lover describes the sound of her voice. He likens it to, to a bird song, which tells the reader that not only is he thinking of her, but that he can hear her and feel sorry about him. He is sweet. Even now, in that bird song. Strew not her accents there, fain to be hacked when those bells possessed the midday air. Strew not her steps to reach my side down all the echoing stair. I twelfth stanza. I wish that he were come to me, for he will come. She said, "Have I not prayed in heaven on it, Lord, Lord? As he not prayed had, are not two pairs, are not two pairs a perfect strip? And shall I feel how bright?" The damsel, of course, can't understand why she had been miserable in heaven, blessed all others are with their loves. After all, are not two pairs a perfect strain? She asks. He on earth and she here in heaven have been praying. 
third stanza when round his head the arclic clings and he is clothed in white i will take his hand and go with him to the deep wells of to the deep wells of light as unto a stream we will step down and bathe there in god's side she dreams of the day when they will be together and present themselves in the beauty and glory of god rosetti also tells the reader that she has not yet entered heaven she is still at the outer gates of the kingdom of heaven deep wells of light and she showed me a river of life clear as a crystal proceeding out of the throne of god we too will stand beside the sorry 14 stanza we too will stand beside that stream occult with held untread whose lamps are still continually with prayers sent up to god and see our whole prayers granted men it's like a little cloud she says they will stand in the innermost sanctuary and pray till they are granted their love a little cloud it is beloved that prayers persisted in heaven in the form of incense which when granted become perfume smoke and melt 15th stanza who to will lie enough uh, okay thank you ma'am thank you okay, thank, thank you, so you for much. giving chance uh, thank we'll you we'll discuss uh, come to page number 395 of your textbook because i try to open uh, i try to open my ppt but it's not opening let's i want to finish unit 24 today so i'll explain that okay page number 395 of your textbook ignore the slide because anyhow i need to open it just for reference let it ignore the slides okay uh, directly come to page number 395 okay and this uh, we are going to discuss about alpha j prolog uh, proof proof talk he was a writer of the poem love songs and uh, hollow man Uh, who was a writer of T.S. I mean, Hollow Man, written by T.S. Eliot. So first, T.S. Eliot will read. Okay. T.S. Eliot was born in 26th September 1888 at Saint Louis. Okay, Missouri, in USA. His ancestors had immigrated to America in 1658 from East Cocker in Somersetshire, England, and uh, had become rich merchant at Boston in. new england usa he is regarded he is regarded as one of the greatest of english poets and has influenced the course of modern poetry more than any other poet of the 20th century he wrote over uh, he wrote for 20 uh, he wrote for over 20 45 years okay he wrote poems plays literary and social essays he also worked as a journalist remember that and also as a editor Elliot became a British uh, citizen in 1927. He was awarded the Order of Merit and the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1948. He died on 4th January 1965 in London. He was cremated and his ash- ashes were buried in the little village of East Cocker, from where his ancestors Andrew Elliot had had immigrated to America in the 17th century. So here. uh what this paragraph is saying that he is a very famous poet uh, uh play uh, playwright playwright he was also a essayist okay he also worked as a generalist or editor what he did uh, he became the british citizen in 1927 he awarded the order of merit and also the nobel uh, prize in uh, he got the nobel prize in literature in 1948 he died on 24 jan uh 1965 in london but his uh, that ashes were uh, but his ashes were put in the east cocker where his ancestors essay was also put okay remember that now uh, let it be uh, come directly to page number 401 for not one uh, uh line 1 to 25 okay textual analysis i'm reading the poem begins on a cons- uh, colloquial note Okay, the U is never actually identified in the poem. Colloquial Colo- 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 means it's not mentioned properly. That U and I, I is already the poet. Okay, U is about whom? It's not confirmed. Okay, colloquial means confused one. Okay, the U is ne- ne- never actually identified in the poem. The poem is not a dialogue between two person. it is instead an internal dialogue in the mind of proof 
through frogs so it's not about the reality actually stuff is uh, uh, going on it's about in the proof of mind okay between the two different facets of his personality uh, there is uh, something called personality multiple personality okay so he also has two different personalities in the evening evening is compared ma'am proof of means proof of means the person's name alfred uh, okay okay ma'am the name is the alfred song of j Al uh, the, uh, sorry the poem name is the love song of j alfred prufo okay prufo was his friend to whom he dedicated this poem he gets a light okay uh it is instead an uh, okay i explained it like the, it is in it is evening evening is compared to the patient at rest upon the table like the patient under the influence of an anesthesia or ether prufo too is mentally paralyzed mentally paralyzed means he has mental disorder okay he is conscious but conscious of nothing he is like very conscious he is uh, he is conscious that whatever things is going on behind him uh, 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 i mean bes besides him but he is not conscious mentally he can feel he can respond but his uh, his mental uh, mental situation is not stable in the next several lines we move through half deserted streets with its cheap one night hotel and uh, sorest restaurants suggesting urban decay uh then uh, in the uh, next few lines we will see that he was mentioning about uh, a half deserted street okay one cheap night hotel restaurant and urban decay okay the next uh, the next image of the streets which are lying with to a tedious argument lead to an overwhelming question it is symbolic of prufox own tedious train of thought for the thought to lead to nothing to folks lapses into a state of mental insatia for he says oh do not ask what it is so here see uh, i'll tell you the gist of the poem the next line uh, uh, first thing remember that alfred j prufox was a friend of ts alloyd and the here you the person you is not to mention uh, uh, ts alloyd is pointing whom that you is not properly mentioned that that who is that you okay and uh, ts alloyd's mental situation is not good first thing the next line deals with a fashionable world where women with their intellectual pretensions talk to michelangelo michelangelo was a famous painter of his time okay the symbol of renaissance art and culture the, there is a dullness everywhere the yellow fog outside is comparable to the fog of Do the fog in Prufok's mind. The fog is likened to a cat again, symbolic to Prufok in tertia and mental dullness. Next line from line twenty-five to fifty. The monotony continues. Monotony means boring, boring. Uh, in this world of hypocrisy, hypocrisy means a person who has two or three faces. Like uh, here, I am saying in front of you that I don't like mangoes, but I really love mangoes. So when I am saying. to one person that i i love mango and i really love mango but in front of you just to show you something else i am saying that no i don't like mango this is called hypocrisy that i am something else i like something else but i am showing something else okay uh, one can be uh, one can never be one real self prufok says there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet uh, there is enough time for a hundred indecisions and for hundred visions and revisions before the taking to the toast and tea a light emphasized the triviality and the superficiality of modern civilization and this meaningless preoccupation with the petty trivialities of ordinary existence undermines prufox confidence in himself he became morally incapable of taking any kind of decision okay he became conscious of his old age his baldness and his thin body uh give me a minute i'm getting a call okay just a minute
okay uh, yeah uh, we were in the, uh, the page number his physical dk appears to be an extension of his mental degradation he dresses like a fashionable man but even this fails to add to his self esteem see if a person is mentally unstable no matter what he is wearing uh, the way he is going to respond the way he is going to uh, act in front of people will show that that person is not mentally good okay so here he they are saying that even if uh, he uh, he dresses like a fashionable he was wearing very good dress okay but even this fails to add to his self esteem matlab that cannot bo uh, i mean that cannot build up his self esteem he cannot be confident because uh, everyone get get to know that he is mentally unstable he is fearful about the sarcastic comments that people might make about his appearance however even such a possi possibility does not rouse him into an any moral action he lapses into indecisiveness for in a minute there is a time for decisions and revisions which a minute will revise the attitude of such a society is nothing new this is always hypocritical propog has known them all the obsession with frivolity is vividly brought out in the line i have measured out my life with coffee spoons propog's life has been wasted in this unreal water of tea parties and social gatherings there is no moment in the, his life that he has lived intensely and passionately he the, here the writer okay uh, i want to correct something ps alert is not mentally retarded he is talking about two folks j alfred two folks okay uh, so the, uh, he he now he is ex explaining that whenever he goes to tea parties or social gatherings okay two folk life has been wasted in this unreal world he thinks that this is not real the thing which is going on in his mind is real but the reality which in which he is doing the action is unreal okay there is no moment in life that has been lived intensely and passionately he didn't live his life properly his life has been measured dull and boring so he is very uh, he is living very boring life his life seems to be just an accumulation of worthless moments uh now line from 50 to 75 the irony of the love song is evident in these lines love which has which can redeem an ignoble one is civilized here the women who inhabit the rooms that two folk is in are incapable of evoking any such emotion in this drawing room there is only brit brittle politeness and shallow conversation two folk is aggregated and bored he is also known these see the poem is about alfred j prufok who is mentally not stable just remember that and read your poem this by on your own this is uh, i any uh, i'll go to the poem page number 405 the hollow man why i am finishing it uh, soon and soon because i oh, we have only one class left that is on next saturday so i have to finish everything i have to revise everything on coming saturday so that's why i'm finishing soon 405 mista kurs he died so the poem started with a line called mista kurs he died mista kurs is a person who died this is what we understood by the line okay analysis of poem let's come to page number 407 the first epigraph mista kurs he died is spoken by a servant in heart of dark darkness reporting to kurs that that so it was another poem another uh, another text called heart of Dark darkness in that it is written that mr could he died so the same is written in this poem the hollow man okay kurtz is described as a hollow sham and the theme of hollowness runs through the poem hollowness means a thing which has hollow hollowness i mean which is not complete which has something uh, uh, what should i how should i explain something un Uh, something uneven is there okay the uh, the this epigraph of the poem a penny for the guy is a reference to guy fakes day the guy is a effigy of old cloth stuffed with paper straw and the old rags this effigy has been displayed by the children if they are to collect any money both these epigraphs set the tone of the poem okay section 1 the hollow men are the stuffed the men hollow men are those people who are stuffed the men hollow men means a person who is not exactly living their life they are like uh, gray uh, they are like uh, they are not happy with the life they have 
simple remember that hollow means means something is missing in their heart uh, in in short uh, we all have uh, we all deal with something like we all feel every time or most of the time that we don't have everything the the needs and the desires and the wants we want but uh, hollow men are the people who sees uh, who sees unevenness in the society okay they are apt to symbols of the spirituality certainty of the modern man when they try to speak only dry voices which whispers meaningless words in his hollow men are those people whenever they are come they come and speak in front of us Okay. Uh, in this world of absolute negation, grass and dry sealer are symbolic to spiritual decadence. In this world of absolute negation, sorry, I'm repeating this again. These hollow men are shaped without form, paralyzed force, just are without motion. They suffer from total paralysis, both physical and spiritual. They are neither like Mr. Goods nor Guy Fox. Both were evil, but they were the violent, lost soul doomed to suffer because of their evil actions. So hollow, hollow men are the people who did so much wrong in their life, and they are like very uh, bad people, uh, and they are suffering from their own actions inside in their mind. Okay, just in short, both were evil, but they were violent soul. Okay, but these hollow men are devoid to any violent action, and are condemned to a life in inter inertia. and valuity both desi pick up states in the eyes of eloid they prefer to be remembered as the hollow men by those who have crossed over with direct eyes to death other kingdoms section second death has two kingdoms the hollow men reflect on those who have passed from their world to nothingness or death dream kingdom to death other kingdom or a higher world this kingdom is only for those who are capable of looking with their direct eyes okay the hollow man who now speaks would like a cross the river to reach that other kingdom but he does not have the courage to face the eyes of those who have lived a life of decision and the purpose in this other kingdom or in the description of the earthly paradise there is a sunlight on a broken column with voices in the wind singing the fading star in which is used by dante as an image of god or of mary but he is afraid to face this world instead he wants to wear such uh, uh, such uh, deliberate disguises as rat coats crow skin cross staves in a field so here he is saying the hollow men don't even wear the proper dresses the way we used to wear proper normal dresses they used to wear something like rat coats crow skin <sighs> cross staves okay uh, to hide themselves in the eye of the people because they don't have courage to meet people Uh, the reference could also be the last cantos of purgatorius here dante crossed from a purgatorial world passing through the two river of river leith which follow in shadow uh, which follow in shadow uh, and then through the river 
you know me the river uh, the first river washes away all the memories of the sun he cannot face the river or read by your own yeah this is theme of the poem i'll explain this poem is similar in many ways the love song of j proplo both poem deals with the spiritual identity of modern man the hollow man is a fine example of egocentric predicament in which man find himself today okay life has become materialistic as we know that we want things instead of we want feelings okay uh, with an importance being given to human values when there is a division between the body and the spirit between the physical and the spiritual uh, then life itself become fragmented in this fragmented world man's perception become narrow he is concerned only with the gratification to his selfish desire he does not have any heroic vision uh, which uh, would help ha have helped him to live life meaningfully the hollow man are the lost souls who are not wanted either in hell or in heaven devoid of faith and purpose they led an aimless and fragmented existence in this respect the hollow man represent all of mankind they are the inhabitant of death's dream kingdom gathered at their last meaning place beside the tumid river these are the shades which have been experienced which have never experienced good or evil having lived a narrow narrowly for themselves they are rejected by both heaven and hell and are condemned to stay eternally by the river waiting to be ferried across either to hell or heaven read this poem along again by your own if you find any difficulty just ask me i'll go to page number 311 hard times okay uh industrial revolution uh, uh dickens dickens uh, charles dickens poem hard time story sorry charles dickens novels the hard time it is a 19th century uh, uh, the 19th century was a age of industrial revolution in england remember that it was also referred to the age of queen victoria england longest reigning queen queen victoria was the only woman who was uh, who ruled england uh, for the very long time okay charles dickens was born on 7th feb 1812 at Port portsea near portsmouth during this period is uh during this period there were there was a lot of opposition to the introduction of factory machinery and the advance of industrialization there was mass immigration from the countryside to the london traditional modes of production were replaced by machines made product in 1819 people who protested against the corn laws in manchester were attacked by the cavalry in st peter's peel 11 people died and it, it came to be known as the peter lo mascare remember that okay the opposition between men and machines are and of hungry workers became the theme of dickens hard uh, there were no formal association or trade union workers were exploited ruthlessly by the capitalist the people character in 8 in 1838 was an important form of public protest but parliament ignored the demand of the uh, chartist in 1854 when charles times was published chartism no longer had any political significance hard times has uh, as its background the ugliness of lancashire cotton town with its ruthless industrialist who flourish under the influence of lazy fairy or the concept of free enterprise the principle of lazy fairy do as you please supported free enterprise without government interference it originated in the work of adam smith in his book the wealth of nations jeremy bentham another 18th century philosopher propagate, propagated the idea of the greatest good for the great number this was often used to support the principle of lazy fairy okay i'll come to the story again so this uh, story is divided into three part first the uh, sowing part second the reaping part and third the gardening part sowing means we are in the soil we are putting some seed reaping means we are cutting after 
uh, that tree or the something is grown from that uh, seed we are reaping that gardening means we are collecting that okay so uh, as from this part the story revolves hard times the first book subtitle sewing is divided into 16 chapters remember that the first chapter sets to the tone of novel okay the scene is set in plain bare and monotonous vault of the school room uh, the speaker mr gargrind addresses the school master and emphasizes his pragmatic approach to his life he asserted teach these boys and girls nothing but fact fact alone are wanted in life you can only form the minds of reasoning animal upon fact so here uh, there is a person called mr gargrind he was saying that we have to teach all men and women to use their mind in a logical way to find out scientific facts okay because facts are only going to help them to live their life so i tell you mr grantit has two children okay let me remember the name one boy and one girl so the, in the whole life they were like uh, he was like forcing people to go for facts instead of going for uh okay he was like don't go for emotional stuff don't go for anything else just go with facts that's all that's the story kaha chala jata second chapter is intel enlightening murdering the innocent it is taken from a new testament and refers to the slaughter of all male infants at the birth of christ the two innocents here are silly and bitsa silly jupe is referred to as a girl number 20 by gradgrind Sissy's father rides horses in the circus ring, but this world of adventure and imagination is dismissed by Granty, who describes his father as a horse horse breaker. So I tell you the story. Let it be so boring. I don't know what is happening. I'm. wait what we were reading hard times by charles dickens right okay uh, the person called thomas granted he was a wealthy retired merchant in the industrial city of coke town remember the town name is coke town i'll explain this okay the town name from the, the town which they belonged is coke town england devotes his life to a philosophy he was like everything is based on rationalism self interest and fact he raises his oldest children lucia and tom tom so he has two children named lucy and tom according to this philosophy that you should go for facts instead of emotions and never allow them to engage in fanciful or imaginative pursuits so he never allowed them to use their emotions okay he found a schools and charitably takes in one of the students the kind and imaginative silly juppy so uh, he in the school where he was working he found a girl called sissy juppy she is very different from her uh, from his children okay sissy jupi is very imaginative full of life girl who used to live uh, for emotions and he you he doesn't like those people who live for emotion he like those people who lives for facts okay as the granted children grow older tom become a dissipated self interested hedonist and louisa struggled with deep inner confusion feeling as she is missing something important in their life see if you will force someone to not to feel it's not like their feeling will stop obviously if you you will force someone to use their fact to use their brain also doesn't mean that their emotion will not come emotions are emotions and facts go together so if you are saying that use one thing and don't use another thing it it will be difficult so when uh, there uh, that the grand grit children's grown up 
Tom and Lucia. They were struggling from uh, their feeling. Okay, even Lucia managed his grandkid friends. Uh, Joyce Birdby, a wealthy factory owner and banker, more than twice of her age. Uh, here, what happened? I tell you, Grand Lucia doesn't. Uh, grandkid's friend Joya Birdby. Uh, he he comes with the. शादी का रिश्ता लेके ही कम्स विद अ प्रपोजल ऑफ प्रपोजल टू गेट मैरिड टू लुइजा एंड लुइजा एग्री टू गेट मैरिड टू दैट पर्सन इन स्पाइट ऑफ नोइंग दैट पर्सन बिलोंग्स टू ट्वाइस ऑफ हर एज बिकॉज हर डैड ऑलवेज थॉट टू यूज द फैक्ट बिकॉज ही इज वेरी वेल्थी सो शी थॉट दैट हिज वेल्थ विल हेल्प हर टू लिव हर लाइफ पीसफुली ओके a uh, wealthy uh, factory owner and the banker more than twice of her age bound bounded by continuous triumphs his role as a self made man who was abandoned in the gutter by his mother as an infant okay tom is apprenticed at the bounder by bank and sissy remains at the grandkid home to care of the younger children in the meantime as improved hand dickens term the lowest laborers in the coke time factory named stephen blackpool struggled with his love for rachel Another poor factory worker. So there is another two characters, Blackpool and Rachel. Uh, they both love each other. He is unable to marry her because he is already married to a horrible drunken woman who disappears for months and even years at a time. Okay, Stephen visits Bounderby to ask about the rewards, but learns that only the wealthy can obtain them. When Stephen went to Bounderby, uh, uh, he was like, "I want to divorce my woman," but then he got to know that. that time divorce was was only given to those people who are wealthy not to those people who are not wealthy okay outside boundaries home he meets mr pedgar a strange old woman with an inexplicable devotion to bounderby james hart house a wealthy young sophisticated from london arrives in coke town to be in a political career as a discipline of gardlin who is now a member of parliament he immediately takes an interest in luisa and decides to try to seduce her with the unspoken aid of mrs supperset a former aristocrat who had fallen on hard times and now works for bounderby he sets about trying to corrupt luisa the hands exhausted by a crook union spokesman named slagbridge try to form a union only stephen refuses to join because he feels that the union strike only will increase the tension between the employees and the employers he is cast out stories now i am not feeling good today that's all for today's class if you have any questions that ask me i am not going to log out before 12 okay so i will be here just ask me if you have any queries any doubt Ma'am, how are the questions asked, ma'am? Please provide the.
Hi friends. Good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon. Have you completed your assignments, all? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anyone is saying anything? See, if you have a group, just share one number to me so I can share all the slides to you. Share one of you your number to me. Who, who is like the owner of the group? Holder of the group? Hello? 
good afternoon good afternoon actually my name is lalita i wanted to join in the group okay so desh you are you na here i am why is why is only it's not audible properly please repeat uh, somewhat louder hello मेरग Okay, Beruka, you share your number with me. Okay, this is your number nine four nine one zero double eight double two seven. It's my number, Madam Lalita. Lalita, I want to join in the group, but I am not added in the group. Lalita, I didn't create any group. They, the only students created. Okay, I will share all the sites with you. That's all. I want one of you to share your number with me. Who is in the group? Irshad Praveen. Yes, ma'am. I am in the group. Okay, I will. I will share it uh, with you. Okay, okay ma'am. Let me take your number. Two five. Ma'am, I did not get any group uh, still now. Wait, wait. I will give you the link of the group so that you can join by the link. Okay. After five minutes, I will close this class. I mean, after four minutes, you all can talk now. Whatever you want to share, I will share everything with the, whom this person is. Shad Praveen. Okay. she will share in the group this is the group link you can by the link you can join the group whoever want to join in the group <laughs> 